tortellini. The myths and culinary history behind these little twisted works of art is fascinating. I mean, what other food on earth could somehow be connected to the famous Birth of Venus by Botticelli? All right, so Karima, I am super excited to hear more about the, really the history of tortellini. I started reading up on, uh, I don't know if it's, a, if it's true or if it's a myth, involving the birth of Venus, the famous painting and tortellini, and it seemed crazy. There is a mythology that is attached to the tortellino. Most foods in Italy that ar arrive at that sort of fame, they have their culinary history and then they also have their mythology. So this story goes a little bit like this that um, in 1630 there was a poem uh, written about the war between Bologna and Modena. Bologna and Modena are great rivals. They're also great rivals for the Tortellino. Then in 1908, a person wrote a little bit of a spin-off on that poem, and in it he has Bacchus, god of wine, and okay. then uh, Mars, god of war, and Venus is, came as well. They all came down from Mount Olympus. They got a room and an inn, just in case they needed to intervene in that war between Modena and Bologna. So Venus wakes up, and where are her companions? They're not there. She calls the innkeeper and wants to know what's going on. He arrives in the, in the room, and he sees, of course, she's a goddess, um, and she's just beautiful. Right. She languidly throws off the bed sheets and as she's jumping out of bed her nightdress flutters up and he gets a look at her belly button so he oh, sees wow. that okay. belly button and is just overwhelmed by this by this vision runs downstairs to the kitchen where the old maid is rolling out a sheet of dough he strips off a little piece and then he's thinking about that belly button, and he's wrapping it and twisting it around his finger, and finally he comes up with a shape that just replicates it perfectly, the belly button of Venus, and that becomes the tortellino. I can see that, the shape, but wow, so kind of this Marilyn Monroe moment, right? So That's right. bed sheep comes up, but it's the belly button that, yeah, that yeah, we focused on. Yeah. So where does it come from? Because I'm assuming it, the idea of what I know is tortellini now mm -hmm. is exactly what ancient Romans were eating. What's wonderful is that the, the actual history of, of um, these foods is also very interesting. You don't have gods coming down from Mount Olympus. The word tortellini is the diminutive of tortello. Um, and tortello, let's say, is synonymous with, with ravioli. And it kind of means a, um, a pie, and so then you have your pie, and your little pie, and your really little pie, which is what, which is what tortellini are. So the tortello was something that was in existence already in Italy, documented in the Middle Ages. But the first um, tortello that makes a reference to Bologna is in 1501. Hmm. That is made with chicken and capon and lots of spices because they like their spices then. Um, but, the, but it's fried. Oh, it's fried. It's a it's fried tortellino okay. and then it's sprinkled with sugar on top. Oh, after so it. it's savory and sweet. Yeah, or... so it's savory and sweet at the same time. Wow, nothing like what I'm used to today. Okay, okay, wow. So then we move on a little bit through history and Bartolomeo Scappi, who is a Roman, the Roman chef to the, the Pope, mm -hmm. um, and he is considered the greatest uh, chef, Italian chef of the Renaissance. Um, he has two of these. One of them is with chicken and bone marrow and the other one is with pork belly and um, cow udder. Now cow udders were a delicacy since ancient Roman times and they continue to be this, this uh, they are soft and unctuous and you're going to make some really tender really? ravioli. Okay? Wow, okay, never knew. We've moved from lots of spices. Right, right. All of the spices of the Renaissance are now reduced to cinnamon and nutmeg. So in 1845, something important happens is that we see pork and prosciutto in the pasta parcel called, uh, called a tortellino. And that's going to move us a little bit further in our evolution. We move into 1891, and here I have Cucina e l'arte di mangiare bene. This cookbook is the culinary treasure of Italy. But what he does is that he finally separates 
tortellino, in capelletto, in anolino, they were all used kind of interchangeably, okay? Mostly with this capon and beef marrow kind of thing. And then you've got the prosciutto coming in with the pork and it all becomes rather mysterious. He draws a picture in his, in his oh, cookbook, yeah. okay. okay, of the tortellino and makes a dis clear distinction between what the filler is there and what the filler is mm. here. Now for him, um, the filler, tortellini alla bolognese, he has prosciutto, mortadella, beef bone marrow, uh, parmigiano, egg, and then we've reduced all of those spices now to nutmeg and pepper. So this is pretty close. Okay. I mean, yes. outside of the marrow, but yeah. Right. Pretty close to, and but yeah, that's what's so funny. I thought we're talking ancient history. We're talking like, what year were we at? Like maybe 18? So this is 1891. 91, yeah. Yes. So man, we're, we're more, way more recent than ancient at right. this point. Getting even closer, yeah, yeah. 1934. Oh wow, okay, 1934. So and in August, we have a recipe here which finally puts in um, the lean pork. Uh, so you okay. have the pork, the mortadella, the prosciutto, but you still have that bone marrow, <laughs> okay? An egg and then um, nutmeg, okay? In 1974, you finally have the Bolognese Academy of Cuisine okay. who decides that they want to deposit an official recipe for tortellini. Instead of just making it up themselves, they, they put out a request for everyone to send in their recipes. The recipes are assessed. The person that they chose was uh, Maria Grimaldi. The, the speculation about why she won is also that it would be much more commercially viable. The, the beef bone marrow would have made it less, uh, have less of a shelf life. Mm. Wow, so. 73, so we're talking like, it's what? The recipe itself, an official, like, this is it, no more bone marrow. It's like 48 years old, like, if that, yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, that's why I love history. So yeah. you assume we know, and then you get the real, like, wait a minute, so, wow, and not only that, but the fact that they, the recipe evolves to a point where what, it's more based on like, how can we commercially make this more accessible? Right, right, right. Wow, that's cool to know like so many different evolutions of it to mm -hmm. now what we know today, which is not old, <laughs> right, right. but classic now. So, mm -hmm. all right, fascinating. Yeah. Wow, and we know it's a myth, which is, well, we're gonna think it's probably the myth, the belly button and the, right, the birth of penis. But hey, that's right, a cool right, myth right. To, to understand <laughs> a little bit more about. Thanks mm -hmm. for giving us all the information.